Okay, so today Aslan, our cat, is getting a cat bath. I just dropped him off. He should be there for at least another hour and an hour and a half or so. So during this time, I thought I'd actually hit up my next project. And my next project is actually right here. This is an electric shell. Um, it's quite a lot of story behind it, but basically, you have the entire cello base over here, you have the pegs over here, down here is where it should be a bridge. The bridge is connected to the sound box over here. The sound box receives a lot of information, turns it into audio, and sends that audio to this part over here. Or you can send it out into your headphones, or in my case, back into a um, an interface in order to put into something like Logic Pro. I got this cello a while ago when I was still in university, thanks to my grandma. My grandma and I, we didn't have the best relationship, we had kind of a very Asian relationship, if you will. We never said how much we loved each other, we always kind of expressed our love in different ways. Our ways were usually related around money on some form or another. Um, my grandma only kind of tells you she loves you if she gives you money for attaining to a couple of things. There's two instances where she will always try to express her affection towards somebody by giving them the money. The first one is whenever we went traveling, she would give us a little extra cash because when you're a poor family and you go traveling, it's generally much more handy to have a little bit more cash on you, just for safety reasons. Something else my grandma and my entire family really liked spending money on was usually on education. So when I was in undergrad, I was actually double majoring in science and music, and music was actually for cello. It was really hard to find a place to practice um, on campus that was really, really accessible. I really, really wanted a way of practicing inside my dorm. I, however, had four other roommates. It's a little hard to kind of sell to your roommates that you want to practice your instrument every single day because everybody else has to study for exams also. And the acoustic cello, which I don't have here, the acoustic cello, which I don't have here with me right now, it's very, very loud because it's meant to be played acoustically for an audience in a small chamber ensemble or, you know, in a concert hall, etc. like that. It's meant to project. So I really wanted something that I can practice uh, at my dorm that's a lot more quiet. Enter the electric cello. I can leave my acoustic cello at the music department at our school, and then in the other times when I'm at home, when I don't want to trek across campus just to practice, I can follow an electric cello. So an electric cello would have been really nice to have because instead of going from my dorm to the practice rooms every single day to basically practice, even on my weekends off, I could just practice at home with something that doesn't cost as much sound, so I won't disrupt my roommates as much. So I really wanted a free channel, and as soon as my grandma and my mom heard word of this, they said, sure, this is something towards education, let's spend some money on it, or let's invest in it, rather. So, the next time my grandma made a trip home to China to basically, you know, visit friends and family, she went around to see if there's any places that sold electric cellos. And when did you know it, in our hometown, there was a place that sold electrical instruments. This was basically all they had, and um, this is the one that my grandma got for me. It was a really nice gift to have, but it's not perfect. There's quite a lot of things going on here that's a little bit um, unconventional for a cello, basically. After receiving the electric cello, I started practicing inside my dorm, and it wasn't too loud, but I didn't practice very much with it. The reason? It's not a very cello-like electric cello. First things first, we have the intro here, and that actually works pretty okay. There's not really too much going on here. It is kind of wobbly, but there is no tension on this right now either, so the wobbliness, it will hopefully go away as I apply more tension here. So first things first, uh, the cello usually has something over here that actually makes this a little bit more forward, so when it sits on yourself, it doesn't sit completely over basically your neck. And if the neck of the cello is really close to your neck, you can't really play anything above here. So this is a problem. You needed something here that kind of brought it a little bit forward, so that this part is just up enough that your hands can kind of go around here and move up and down freely. That is problem number one. Number two is this. I actually really like to hug the body of the cello with my legs, and I can't do that if there's nothing to hug onto. One quick thing to note, I did try to fix the cello a little bit despite the fact that I don't have 3D printing, and my idea at the time, when I was still living in a dorm, was the glue Lego at the back here, so I can actually put Lego blocks over here to match the height that I need it to be, so it can actually fit on my chest over here. And that is why we have this uh, we have this kind of a Lego tumor on the back of my cello here. Here is an electric cello by Yamaha. 
and it is one of their models that actually works really well. First thing you note, that they actually have a part here that comes out forward, and this part will sit exactly on my chest. Second thing you'll note, there is basically a shape of the body of the cello, kind of coming out from the wings here, and that allows me to hug it. This works very well. My legs have fallen place the rest, my chest has something that kind of pushes on top of it, It works completely fine. I need to make these adjustments basically to the wings here and also the chest here on the actual electric cello because I want to make that electric cello usable. So first things first, that ain't gonna fly. We have to take this out. Okay, it is stripped and now it is even much more closer to my chest. There's no way I can play this electric cello like this. Because if I do this, this is way too close. I can't bend my elbow physically in to actually play the notes. Well, I'll kind of show you in a little bit, but I wanted something that basically holds onto this part really, really tight. That comes out a little bit and has a giant hole over here. And if the hole is over here, then you can put a second piece right over here on this area, and that can be used to push the back a little bit. A hole right over here, and then something can kind of come right out here and go over this way. It's a lot easier to design because this part is being pushed this way. So my chest is over here, it's always going to be pushing inwards. And the force is going to keep pushing this part inside, which is pretty good. Basically, I want that to be like this, and hold it down to around here if possible. I think this is a perfect spot to basically leave it, and that is a thing for to end. Okay. Now, the bottom over here, I do want the wings. That's going to be a little more difficult. The other Yamaha has basically the wings as a metal piece that is screwed on to the back. There's nothing really to screw on over here, so that is already going to be problem number one. And also considering the fact that I have a Prusa, and the Prusa's diameter is around 220 centimeters, uh, 220 millimeters rather, it's going to be a little tough. It has to be coming in parts essentially. So the other idea I had was maybe it will be something that I can just clamp on here. And if it's a clamp that goes kind of completely on here, and the other side extends back here a little bit, it might work a bit easier. Anyhow, first things first, let's work on this piece. adjust it in this manner. Let's see if we can just do that now. First, this is what I was talking about earlier, and basically if you put this in here, this is tight. It's not moving much at all. Basically, there's small gaps and might kind of vibrate as this vibrates and as the strings vibrate. Uh, if there's small gaps and the string vibrate, it can cause some little distortions going on. I want to show you, let's see if this goes in there. And... No, it does not. I think we went a little overboard on the uh, measurements on that side. So, the 
edge here is slightly too thick, and this part is slightly too thick as well. I'll probably sand this part down a little bit. I might use a bit of a exacto knife to see if I can lower this a little bit. So I have used my Dremel tool, and I just kind of went around the sides through here, around this part, this part, and this part. Because it turns out this is the part that's really problematic. This part is a little bit troublesome, but after a while, it became not so much of an issue. The top part, however, a lot more problematic, which made sense because this was the curve, and the curves are uh, the curves are a little harder to replicate on CAD, which is the picture. Now we have both of these together, and they're relatively the same. And then we'll just plug it in and see how far that goes. Uh, the only thing right now that I have that seems that's a little troublesome is the fact that this part, there is a little bit coming out. The sides are completely filled properly, but the white is coming upwards a little bit. I'm hoping that's not going to be too much of an issue, but we might have to work around that a little bit as well. But I'm pretty happy with the way it's turned out so far. This is a really good fit. I'm just going to clean this up a little bit, and then we'll work on the uh, piece that's actually supposed to come out here. The top and bottom part is the only thing I'm going to have a little bit of trouble with with, but I think as long as the sides are still touching, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. There should be enough friction to keep it in place. So what we're going to do next is, I'm going to bring something out here, and then we're going to go essentially. Probably going to go out, and then we're going to go up a little bit, and then after going up a little bit, it's going to go out a little bit on that side. I'm thinking it's just going to go around the side here, and kind of come back around this side, just around this bank. Here is signal, one signal signal in the center, and I think that is about it. I think that's as far as we can do in terms of pushing this. Not only do these serve kind of as an artistic thing to make it look kind of cooler, they also are functional because now I can print with a lot less material, and I think I might be running a little low on that as well. Okay, so while that is running, let us basically work on the next step. Uh, so while I was kind of waiting for that to go on, I kind of did some redesigns on the the posterior chest touch attachment, basically. First things first, I made it a lot more thin. So basically only this part is now coming out. So I mean this part coming out, those parts are going to be in just because Looking at it over there, this is already pretty structurally sound, I think. I don't think anything's going to really break it, especially if it's just me putting some uh, light kind of pressure on it from my uh, fingering of the cello. So I don't think that's going to bother too much. So, aside from this part, which I need it to actually just act as height, a lot of this isn't really useful. And also because I do want to save a little bit of filament, this is going to be basically thinner everywhere. Except for this part, which will come out a little bit, uh, fitting the contour of this area with this part just stretching out a little bit. So this posterior part is going to be black. This part, however, I think I will have enough. This is a co-design. I decided to leave as the uh, kind of center part. And what this is, this is actually an insert. This is going to go right over here, and this hole is going to go right in here. So they connect with each other, and basically this part goes on here, and then to lock this part in place, we have this thing over here, basically. On the F-holes area, we do have two, uh, well, basically two dots. And I can put, if I wanted to, film in here to make sure the two stay together also. I may or may not do that. Um, I have to kind of see how it really uh, functions afterwards. I'm going to print this out after that is basically done to uh, make this a white part because it will contrast really nicely with the dark part here. And it will basically go from there. Beautifully done. No signs of any trouble on that side. Everything's good. Pieces are great on this side as well. Nothing coming out there. The F-holes I think are definitely a good touch because like I said, cellos have F-holes. This now will also have F-holes. That doesn't have any F-holes. And now the hard part. It 
has to basically go in here perfectly. Huh. Well, that actually works pretty well. I don't know why there's so much give here. There's like a few centimeters of give on. So this works really well on this side, it attaches to the back pretty nicely, but it moves around way too much, which is a problem because it wasn't supposed to do this. This part comes out a little bit, but you can see there's so much give that's on top there. So I don't know what happened there. Uh, in terms of movement on side to side, it's not bad, I guess, but I kind of wanted this to stay stable without me holding it up. And this is definitely not that. Oh boy. Let's see how we might be able to fix this. So instead of printing new parts, what I did was I just put door stoppers on the bottom there. And now the cello is like that on that side. And on this side, I put door stoppers there, but nothing on the bottom because the bottom is there. The top part's here. They meet in the middle and basically they fit pretty well. This part then can go in pretty easy on that side. And basically the little give on the top there is completely gone. It also doesn't shake around too much. I think it works pretty well. This part is not 100% in tune with this part. It's also slightly rickety, so I might put some little parts around here to make sure it doesn't move around too much. It's enough to hold itself in place, which is all I really needed it to. I just need to make sure that it doesn't kind of vibrate around too much at this point. Very good. My filament, you have done well. It's time for one last go, and I think you're all done. Oh, not too bad. We have this entire piece over here. And with the sports gone, it actually does look pretty decent. It does fit pretty well, the only problem is, well, this is going to come out a little bit in the front here because there is another piece that's going to go right over here, but that does work pretty well. This is looking really, really nice. Now, test, that really matters. Chest comfort. This one is also around 15, but I guess the chest piece is much more over here, so it is a little different. And the feet and the legs do make a huge difference, so I do think that is necessary. This lift is fine. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. This part, if I put a nail through here, works out pretty well over here. You have just a little bit over there, but it is still a little bit loose. We do also have from IKEA again these guys. So the idea is, yeah, I'm an amateur at this clearly because I didn't plan any of this out. The idea is I'm going to glue gun this part in so it doesn't wiggle too much on that side. And on the other side, we're going to put part of this. Let's put it together. So far, so good. If I had the blank piece in place, it just feel very comfortable putting much each other. And the main part is actually this part that touches my chest, since I actually do lean it like this, and that's why this part is filled in really, really nicely. That works pretty well. This other part, usually there's, you know, coats and stuff like that. I think this is more than enough to make it go through.
All right, let's go through build number one then. This is a nameplate. And first of all, in the back over here, we made a little indent. So this is 0 0.5 millimeters of give in between that area. Let's see if it fits properly. Ooh, it fits properly and it still has too much room. Now that I kind of expected, though not necessarily this much. So maybe the give, the optimal give to give, it's probably not 0 0.5 millimeters, it's probably 0 0.25. The main purpose was to test to see if this works out pretty okay. So like I said, it's hard to see, but this one over here is actually the 4.0. This one is the 4.3. I think what I do do is this. 4.0 works already really well, but on a very, very tight level. 4.3 works very, very well, but it's kind of loose. Maybe somewhere in the middle is the right correctness. Uh, which way do you want to sway towards? Well, probably maybe 4.2. 4.2 might be the best way forward about this. I guess before we do the build of this one, um, I should mention a little bit something. Just because there's a small story. Here. I have this notepad here that's grid paper. And you might notice that it is grid paper, a blank, grid paper, and a blank. It alternates this for the entirety over here. Now, I actually had a whole stack of like 10 of these way back then. Because what happened was, I had worked at the, university, uh, the university's stationery store as one of their retail cashiers, essentially. And one day, the manager came out to me and they said, Oh, by the way, we have a back order because something was misprinted. And they basically showed me a whole stack of these things. It was just, it was supposed to be all grid paper, but somehow the printing messed up. So, you know, it was grid paper, then it was plain paper, then it was grid paper and plain paper. And they said, basically, we can't sell these because this is not what the manufacturer wanted to sell. And we're like, okay, so what do we do about them? And they said that it's too expensive to send it all back, so they're gonna recycle all of them. At which point, all of the staff, myself included, said, hey, we'll take them, this is still good paper. And that's why I have like a whole stack of these. I have like 10 of these little booklets, essentially. It was from my time of working at the university, of, uh, at the university stationery store, essentially. It was a great time, and it was quite a while ago. Apart from that, this is also what I use for it because the grid paper is actually really good for designing things on it. It is exactly 5 millimeters by 5 millimeters. So 5 and 5. Very good for designing stuff. In-house throw you over. The heart. You know what? This ain't bad. You could probably definitely make this work. So, taking mistakes from the last print we had, it was really difficult to take out a lot of the supports inside of the screw holes. <coughs> so, what I'm doing now is I am putting just a little bit towards the edge here. Now, when that happens, uh, when the print is finished, eventually when it comes out, the screw holes on this end will have a little bit of an indent, which means it's uh, very easy to put my Allen key through and just push the supports out all the way. I think that'll work fine. So we're gonna leave it around there, and yeah, that should be good for this.
Nice. Much better. So that wing is a lot, a lot better and pushes in a lot more as well. This part, definitely much better than the other side. So far so good, very successful. We have a wing. When I was in school, these strings were so expensive. Because there's like 80 bucks basically.
last thing I actually need to do is I just need a stand for this to basically make it stand up. Because I think as soon as we have that, Dazlan, what are you doing here? Dazlan! So, anyhow, I'm gonna make a little design just for the uh, ending holding there, and I think that'd be it for this design. I like everything about this project, it's looking really good. Alright, on to just making a little stand for this.